Hello to you again. What we're looking at here is a problem that appeared in Dr. Ercole Del Rio's book published in 1769. And the problem in question was composed by Del Rio's sidekick, the anonymous Modenese who probably collaborated with Del Rio on his work. And it's black to play and checkmate in five moves. Black is playing this way. That is not quite correct. And when this work was translated in 1820 into English by J.S. Bingham, the author of that work repeated the mistake. And one of the owners of the book, probably the original owner of this book, he corrected it and he put a page of analysis in and pasted it into the relevant space in the book. And very interesting, it is too, looking at handwriting from over 200 years ago. So this gentleman had it quite right. It is in fact a mate in six. It goes one move further than the five. So what we have to look at here is how does black penetrate white's second rank here? What does he do? What is his key move? We must bear in mind that white has just played that. So now we start to look at this position and we say black to checkmate in six moves. How does he do it? Well, clearly, if he moves this rook out of the way, it's very dangerous down there on b8. So he leaves that rook where it is and he does something quite different. What does he do? Well, he plays a move here, which is in some ways sort of reminiscent of uh, Capablanca's move against Ossip Bernstein, I think in 1914, where he leaves black in a position where he paralyzes white on white's back rank here. Now if you notice in this position, should he take the queen, then it's rook takes, rook interposes, checkmate. Should he take the rook, it's an immediate queen takes d1, checkmate. So he cannot afford to touch either the rook on b2 or the queen. So what does he do? Well, he has no option but to play here because white is threatening queen g2 mate. We must not overlook that. So, continuing to take a look at this position, what does white do next in order to force the issue? Well, he brings his knight in like this. And of course, all good chess players will be familiar with the smothered mate. Yep, that's what he's threatening, knight f2. No doubt about that, that would be checkmate. So he has to defend against that. So what does he do? What does he do in that position? Well, if he plays here, trying to defend against knight f2, just note the following variation. Black comes check. He takes the knight. Then can you see the rejoinder? Yeah, this is really good, isn't it? And that is checkmate down the H line. Very impressive indeed. So that rules out rook f1. So what does he have instead? Well, he can't afford to move this rook away, so he needs a flight square. He plays here. Now then, how does black continue here? It's black to make his third move. Right, well, he does check here, like that. And of course, white only has one move to there. So black to make his fourth move. What is he going to do here? Well, he's going to play there. Check. It's as simple as that. And he's leaving white with just one move, isn't he? The king can't move. So he has to play g3. So in two more moves, and this will prove the, the gentleman's point back in 1820 when this work was translated and he was making his comments in fountain pen what do we do here what do we do right well what we do is we play check and that is double check because there's not only check from the knight but it's check from the rook as well so what does he do there he can't interpose anything he can't touch the knight he has to play here and now black to make his sixth move? Yes. Checkmate rook h2. And that is a very interesting problem. 
Pity that uh, Del Rio and Bingham had it wrong, but uh, many thanks to this gentleman. I, as a matter of fact, solved all of this even before I started looking at his, and then it was a, a real delight to see that I had managed to get it exactly as he wrote everything down in old notation. Incredible. Many thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.